just fine. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take two sticks of butter and a third of a cup of cocoa. And I'm just gonna shake that in here. Or thereabouts, okay, a third of a cup of cocoa. And a cup of coffee, one cup of coffee. And we're gonna go over to the stove. I'm gonna set this over medium heat. Get a wooden spoon, pardon my reach, babe. And then while this is gonna be over here kind of happily melting, my, my butter was already a little soft. I took it out during supper, so it's just gonna kind of come to a, a nice little simmer there. We're gonna come over here, we're gonna measure out our flour and our sugar. And Two cups of flour. Have it be big enough? Yeah, it's just, it'll be fine. And if it's not, I'm sure you'll tell me. Okay. We'll make that one a little short because a little extra went in the bowl. Two cups of flour. Two cups of granulated sugar. Oh, that's not going to be big enough. Huh? That's not going to be big enough. Yes, it is. It'll be fine. Stop it. It's going to be just fine. One cup, two cups. I only need to measure it in there. I don't need to stir anything in there. You always think I have a too small bowl. And then we need some baking soda. We need, let's see, teaspoon of baking soda. Teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of salt. This is our pink salt. This is what I use exclusively now for eating. Um, and then of course I use canning salt for canning. Thanks, I didn't even stir. I'm not stirring, I'm sifting with a whisk. Mm. I'm just going to give this a good mix because it's not really a big deal. But I like to disperse that salt and that baking soda in there and, and get everybody kind of mingling, help to get that party started. Mm. Then we'll come over here and I'm going to pull out my... This is the pan we're gonna bake it in. Oh, yes, the straws fell over. Okay, it's been a long day, folks. And it's noisy, hmm? Okay, I forgot, we have to have two eggs, a half a cup of buttermilk, and some vanilla. So let's get that ready. Give this a little bit of a stir. It's still melty, melty. The butter's not all the way melted yet. We're good to go. By the time we get everything measured out, it's gonna be perfect and we'll be ready to move on. Okay. So we'll measure a half a cup of buttermilk in here. In my glass bottle. I, everybody always comments on where did I get my milk in glass bottles? And I'm very fortunate to have a mom and pop little store where we buy our milk once a week. We call it going on our milk run. They go, they drive two and a half hours west of where we live to go to a, as local as you're gonna get dairy farm here in North Carolina. And we get antibiotic free uh, organic milk. And I absolutely love it. Okay, give this a whisk. I also buy my eggs and sometimes I buy butter there and some cheese. And he always has locally grown produce. And I'm very, very fortunate. All right, now we'll bring all of this over here. 
Now see, our butter, our cocoa, and our coffee have all melted together, and it's absolutely perfect, exactly where you want it. Hey, it smells good. Yeah, it does. We're gonna put it over here on the cold burner. First, we'll put in our flour and sugar, baking soda and salt mixture. Get that going in there. Oh, it smells amazing. You are going to be just, you're just going to be knocked, you knock your socks off at how much that cup of coffee and just really intensifies the chocolate flavor. Now I'm going to take my spoon out of here. I want to get this whisk going. I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Oh yeah, Rick reminded me. <laughs> I wanted to tell you, I'm not gonna do a Coca-Cola version of this cake, simply because it's the same recipe as this. The only substitution you would make is in place of the coffee, you would use Coca-Cola. Because I don't like high fructose corn syrup, and you cannot get American Coca-Cola that is made without it, I would only use Mexican Coca-Cola to make my Coca-Cola cake, or I would use Jones Cola, because Jones makes a cola that is made with pure cane sugar. Unfortunately, we can't get that here anymore either. Or if you're lucky enough to find some Pepsi Throwback. Pepsi Throwback would work as well. One thing I am going to look and see is if Tarani makes a cola flavored syrup. Because essentially that is what it is. You would just add the syrup to a little water and you could use that in place of Coca-Cola. Okay, we're going to move over here to where the pan is. I'm going to give it a little bit of a spray. It really does make a difference. It's a very moist cake, so it is gonna stick a little bit, but not too much. All right. Just dump it right on in there. Make sure you get every drop of goodness that's in that pot. Okay. Oh, it smells so good. It's kind of mm hmm You do may have to coax it just a little bit, but my counter is a little bit crooked, so once we get that in the oven, whoops, it'll all be fine. Okay, into our waiting 350 degree preheated oven. And we're going to set our timer for 15 minutes, and we're going to come back, and we're going to show you how to make the frosting. Let's start our icing. Use a stick of butter, about a third of a cup of cocoa, which is about what I had in the bottom of that canister there, and a half a cup of buttermilk. You don't have to use buttermilk. You can just use regular milk. You can use almond milk or whatever you have on hand. You can use canned milk. That'll be fine. I like the extra tang that the buttermilk lends to this icing. And in a traditional Texas sheet cake recipe, every single one I've ever seen, including the one my ex-husband's grandmother used to make, there was buttermilk in the frosting. And the reason I was going to mention earlier, the reason that you put the butter, you know, the, the butter and the sugar, or the butter and the cocoa and the coffee in the batter part is because cocoa is actually considered a liquid ingredient. And so is sugar, granulated sugar or powdered sugar, they're all considered liquid ingredients. So when people are devising a recipe, that's what they, you, you have to know that when you add any of those ingredients, it's gotta be considered liquid. So that's why we mix them together and they are considered part of the liquid portion of the, of the batter. Because I know a lot of people are like, well, 
sugar is not liquid, but it is because sugar melts. And I'll never forget when my ex-husband refused to believe me that sugar would melt if you put it in a hot pot, you know, like if you make caramel or something. He did not believe me. I had to show it to him, and he was, like, amazed. Yes, Rick was much smarter than that. My ex-husband is, you know, my ex-husband. <clears throat> I traded him in for a newer model. Okay, now this doesn't have to be boiling, but it should be hot, okay? And we know it's hot because the butter has melted, the cocoa has incorporated, and now... I'm going to leave it over the medium heat. I'm going to stir in two and a half to three cups of powdered sugar. I did not sift this. I'm just going to put it in there and I'm going to have the whisk. I'm going to whisk it. And my whisk, it's time for a new whisk. I think I actually have a better whisk somewhere else. I have to get it out. Just keep it over the heat long enough so that you can beat out all of those lumps, bumps, and there's no more graininess left in here. It's going to become very silky. Just like the peanut butter frosting did. It should also be excellent on the cake. Yes, it would. Excellent be on this cake. They're, I'm talking like Yoda now. Okay. Yes, it would excellent be peanut butter on chocolate cake. I'll have to edit that out. I'm going to put a little glug of vanilla in there. You never want to add your vanilla while it is still on the heat, otherwise it's probably going to just cook out. Now, at this point, you're going to assess your frosting. I tend to like this frosting a little bit thicker than it is, so I'm going to add some more powdered sugar. I'm going to start with a cup. Now, this is a personal preference. I like it to be pourable, but I don't like it to be too thin. There goes a cup, okay? There are no mistakes here, I promise. Just whisk this so I can already tell that it's a bit thicker. That's about where I want it. Actually, it's still a bit thin. I'm just going to go ahead and put another cup in this, what's about left in this bag. So, start out, if you want to start out with a little less liquid, then I recommend that as well. But can you have too much frosting? I don't like it to run off the side of the cake. <laughs> so, and we're going to let this sit off to the side while the cake finishes which is going to be seven minutes and then we're going to let the cake sit for five minutes after it comes out of the oven before we pour the frosting on it. That is much better for me. Much better. It is ribboning now. Okay. Pull your icing off the stove. Put your dishes in the dishwasher and wait for your cake to beep. When that happens and the cake's cool for five minutes, I'll be back and we will frost the cake. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're ready. Our cake came out of the oven and it's cooled for five minutes. And now we're gonna just pour this frosting right over the top. You may not use all of it. If not, you know, you might have some kids or a husband who could oh, polish that off for you. It'd be good on? Yeah, it'd probably be good on ice cream, honey. Is that what you're gonna say? Oh yeah. Yeah, maybe you could like top it off with bacon syrup. Hmm. No? I don't know. Just even this out. Mm. 
you can already see that this frosting is going to crust over really nicely. This coaxes it into every little corner of the pan. And then you're going to want to walk away from this for about 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That pan is still hot. You don't want to eat this when it's too hot. You can eat it when it's nice and warm, but you're going to want to give this frosting and the cake a little bit of time to get to know each other. If it drips, it'll clean up. <laughs> if all I ever had to worry about in my life was spills, my life would be pretty good, wouldn't mm. it? Okay, see, this is what's left. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'll leave it in the pot. I'm sure it'll disappear before bedtime. All right, we're gonna let this cool and then we'll come back in a little while and we will cut you a slice of that Texas sheet cake. I know you're gonna love it. Thanks, it saved me some cleanup. A little bit. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're all ready to. Whoa! Oh. We're all ready to stab the dog. That was almost bad. That was almost bad. Okay. It's late and I'm tired. And now I've got dropsy. <laughs> All right, so here's our cake. It's cool enough to eat. You see, I wanted a pretty piece for you, so I had to sacrifice the edge piece. But it's really tasty. It's really tasty. Hmm. Now, feel free to serve that with a little vanilla ice cream. Come on, in the house. But tonight, I think we're just gonna give it a little whip. You can do powdered sugar too. Powdered oh, sugar would be pretty. There you go. A little whipped cream. And that is how I make Texas sheet cake. And it is reminiscent of the way that my first husband's grandmother used to make hers. And it's very similar to the way you make the peanut butter sheet cake we made last week. And next week, I'm going to make vanilla sheet cake. I'm going to show you how to make that. It's really easy. I mean, it's like this without the chocolate. Um, I hope you try it, and I hope you love it. And until next time, I'll see ya.